For Golden West, I'm Craig Hemingway along with Jim Cuddy of Blue Rodeo. They're a plane in Regina, connects us to Art Center here. And, and uh, we're going to get to the Juno stuff in a second. But, I mean, the band itself, this is the 25th anniversary tour. Back in uh, 87, uh, your self-titled debut comes out. Do you think uh, 25 years into the future this is happening? <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think we ever thought we were going to have a record out. So it was such a surprise to actually have Outskirts come out that uh, I, we never projected. You know, we never, I mean, I think in the, obviously, once you're 10, 12 years in, you think maybe this will last a little while. But uh, I think still reflecting on 25 years of album releases is still pretty awe-inspiring for us. When you see bands like the, uh, the Rolling Stones in their 50th year, do you see that happening? I think we might have started a little too late. 25 more years puts us, I think, uh, uh, into our into our 80s so i just don't think so what does it mean to still be together with with greg and, and the band and, and coming off a year last year where you're inducted into canada's uh, music hall of fame you know it was a great honor that was that was the one time i think that this band collectively allowed itself to look back and to be proud of you know um all that we had accomplished and where we'd come from and and uh and then it's just so quickly back to business as usual you know even now with the 25th anniversary tour we we had a couple months in the fall to to record so we're we're pretty much finished a new record so we've got new songs that we're doing and so i think that that's the best the best state the band can be in is is comfortable with its past but but also with a foot in the future and of course the junos coming to uh, saskatchewan this year you were uh, here in 2007 in saskatchewan when they were in saskatoon and juno cup in in uh in prince albert uh so uh what did you think when you heard that they're coming back to this province? Well, I thought that the ones, uh, the, I thought Saskatoon was a really, really enjoyable uh, Junos. Um, there's something about the, the unity with which Saskatchewan celebrates many things. Football, you know, music, um, and now commerce. Um, that, that's very enjoyable to, to participate in. And... Uh, I was also saying earlier that, that um, when we were in Saskatoon and we had the Juno Cup in, in Prince Albert, we had the drive, the, the bus drive, and that's the most fun part. You know, the, the least fun is to finish with all the NHLers and then take a bus, short bus ride to a hotel and then everybody goes off. This one, when we'll be in Moose Jaw, at least we'll have a 40-minute, no, hopefully there'll be traffic, we can turn that into an hour. But that's the best part, hearing stories and, and maybe strumming a guitar or something like that. And of course, you're the guy behind the Juno Cup. Uh, what year did uh, this first start? It's been 10 years. Is this the 10th year? Oh, good. So this is 10 years. So it's been, it was 10 years ago that we started it. It was, um, it was originally an initiative by MasterCard for the Bobby Orr Equipment Drive. And then it was, it just, it didn't have a, a life there. So it was brought to the Junos and it's, it's had a great life at the Junos. It's, in, I think it's really helped to engage the, the uh, musicians in something more than just uh, coming to receive or, or, or lose awards. And, uh, I think what it did is it, it, it sort of engaged the community a bit more, engaged the musicians. Of course, it's fun to have the NHLers here. And it just made the whole weekend a little bit more of a, a broader celebration. And as a you know, hockey fan yourself, it's just probably a thrill when you see these uh, NHL alumni guys that you remember from being on the ice to be able to share the ice with them, right? Oh, it's ridiculous. And, and you know, we are very lucky in Canada for many reasons, but, but one of them is that our sports heroes are actually very nice people. You know, we're not dealing with the, the huge inflated egos of basketball players or, or football players. We, really, these guys are very down to earth, so they're really enjoyable. And, and you, you don't, as much as you admire their skill, you don't really understand how, you know, ultra, ultra incredible their, their skills are until you're on the ice. Because they just fool around with the poor musicians until they, they deal the knockout blow in the last couple minutes. I'm going to take a leap and say if you're going to the Juno Cup, you aren't going for the hockey necessarily, but how competitive is it? Well, we try to, we try to be as, you know, we, I would say of the team, the musician's team, half the guys can play or maybe play a little hockey. And, uh, and, then, and then many of them, you know, we just want to get people out. We don't really care about the skill level. And some people just, they don't even know the rules. So uh, sometimes it's a joke, but we try to, we try to lull the NHLers into a sense of com- such complete superiority that they forget about playing the game, and then we, then we, then we'll uh, ice a line that's that's actually good and and try to catch up. But it, there's a lot more to it than that. There's a there's a skills competition that's a lot of fun, and and uh, um, we always try to provide a, a, a close end. 
the actual list of uh, of some of the the NHL alumni and some of the rockers playing in the game was released today, and I think there was a sense of maybe that uh, well the the game is in Saskatchewan, it'll be primarily Western uh, ex NHLers, but I mean it's announced today that Gary Roberts, the former uh, Toronto Maple Leaf and Calgary Flame, who's an Ontario guy, he's coming. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a connection of yours, or just a guy who has been a part of it and wanted to be a part of it again? Gary's a friend, and uh, um, and uh, uh, he's. Really nice to, to, to lend his, his time, you know, because he's an incredibly busy guy. He's got, like, a second family going, and he's got that crazy gym that he runs. And so, uh, yeah, he comes. He's great. Um, Brad Delgarno comes every year. Troy Crowder is great. He comes every year. Mark Napier is kind of the captain of their team, and Mark is a much decorated hockey player and a ridiculously competitive individual. <laughs> and, uh, um, Mike Sillinger, so local. I mean, what we try to do is we also try to find out who, who lives in the area and who, who will come out and play. So I think that something that we'll also announce a little later on is some, some, some more local uh, um, former NHLers or players. Right, and as far as the, the music team, there's yourself and uh, Jason Plum, speaking of local, uh, rejoining musician, uh, formerly of the Waltons, and now uh, uh, Jason Plum with the Willing. So that's a couple that were announced. Any others you can divulge to us at this point? Well, the thing about the the, uh, the musicians is um, we, we have to get the um, Juno nomination lift because we try to make it Juno nominees. And, uh, um, you know, we have some idea. I think everybody has some idea of the bands that will be nominated. But until we know the nominations, we can't really – then we just – then we start asking people. You guys are, have won, I think, 11 Junos now, and, and, and we talked about the Hall of Fame last year. Um, when you look back on the awards themselves, I think artists would probably say, well, we're not in it for the awards, and probably you aren't, but when you win, what, is, what does that mean? Well, I think everybody would tell you that uh, it's, it is an honor to be nominated because that's an acknowledgement of your work, but it's better to win. You know, it's fun to win. It's just, it, it, that's a champagne night instead of a beer night. You know, it's a good night. Um, I think that, you know, I think for everybody, what it does is it, it somehow elevates the, um, the status of the music culture. Just by having winners and multiple winners, you know, Arcade Fire will have a big year and everybody will like, yeah, it's, it's, we have crowned them even though the world owns them, we've crowned them. So I think all it does is it just, it provides um, a little shine to everyone's daily work and uh, and creates a bit of a celebrity uh, system, which is you know it's it's not bad. It's 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 the fun part of it. And we're not used to having events like this in Saskatchewan, so it's a real treat to have uh, Juno Week in Moose Jaw and Regina. Um, what do you tell somebody who, uh, as a fan, who who wants to buy tickets and go check out some of the events, if not the award show themselves, some of the other events leading up to it, Juno Fest, things like that? How do you explain to them how cool it is? Oh, I think that it's it's well worth uh, you know um, taking some time off to, to do it. First of all, there's a, there's just absolutely a ton of bands that come and play, and that's that's unusual for any city, whether it's the size of Regina or the size of Toronto. Um, uh, you're you're going to see. Uh, some bands just doing their act, but then you're going to see a lot of things like uh, um, the bands that are either playing with each other or I. One of my favorite things is the is the uh, songwriter circle. Is that uh, I don't know when it's taking place. Sometimes it takes place on Thursday night. Sometimes it's a Sunday morning. Is it the, is the acoustic show back to the Sunday morning? Sunday morning. So the Sunday morning is perfect because it's Saturday night. It's usually a late night. Sunday morning is you're a little tired, and uh, they, and it's just a very casual. You know, usually there's eight different songwriters and. Uh, all, all of interest, and you just see them in the most casual, unadorned setting. So that's the kind of thing that happens all over the city um, at, during those four days. Juno week is April 15th to the 21st in Regina and in Moose Jaw, and yeah, April 19th, the Juno Cup hockey game at Mosaic Place in Moose Jaw, featuring uh, Jim Cuddy, the originator, the captain of the, of the rockin' team. <laughs> uh, we'll see you on the ice in Moose Jaw in April. Can't wait. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to it as well.